Today I want to talk to you about the books that I read in February, or rather the best books that I read in February. Um, and I read most of them on Kindle, um, so I'll be flipping through my Kindle. The first one is The House in the Cere... Let's try again. The House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Klune. Um, this was very cute. Um, Let's see. It's about a world where um, children who are magical are put in orphanages, um, I, and I they're kind of shunned a little. Like um, people, there's there's some prejudice and there's some yeah there's some murky stuff, and the main character is a guy who goes around to these orphanages and or like schools or whatever they call them and make sure that they're safe for um the non-magical humans who work there and the um ch children as well and then he gets posted to like a top secret um thing where he has to go to an island and live on this island and observe this this one school um, or orphanage, I guess, house, home, I don't remember what they call them, uh, for a whole month. And he is surprised by what he finds there, and he finds that he has a lot of prejudice. And I was kind of frustrated with him for not being, like, open-minded <laughs> at the beginning. He was very, like, grey and A4 and rule-following, and I think I saw too much of myself in him honestly um <laughs> but yeah he eventually opened up his horizons and became more more human and less rule following which was lovely to see and it was just there's a little bit of romance in it and it's it's just a heartwarming story it's it's a little bit like like someone likened it to um miss peregrine's home for peculiar children but like more sunshine <laughs> a little bit more happy uh, <laughs> that's that's my vibe because this is a this um miss peregrine's home for peculiar children is like a thriller horror uh this is not a thriller horror <laughs> this is this is fantasy and not the, the scary kind. I would not be able to read this if it was that scary. So yeah, if you like the sort of concept of Miss per Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children, but you would like it more soft, <laughs> then this book is for you. The next book I wanted to talk about um, is, let's see, a short story called Grandad's Cup of Tea by Amy Ray Durison. And it's a very sweet story about two gay men, or like one bi and one gay man, finding each other in like later in life. And it's just so lovely to have these stories about um, LGBTQ people at other stages in life than like 20s and 30s. I just really appreciated that. Like he's a grandfather and um, like his grandkids are dealing with, with people coming out their age and then he's dealing with his coming out. And it's, yeah, it's just, it's a lovely story. I really, really liked it and I highly recommend it. It's just so cute. Next, let's see. Next is A Lady's Desire by Lily Maxton. This is also quite short, uh, like a novella length, um, and it's about two women finding each other, two women falling in love and finding each other. It's a sort of friends to lovers kind of thing where they've been apart for for several years and 
what I really liked about this is that they didn't pro compromise. Um, they wanted a happily ever after that they were together in and they went for it. They were like, okay, what skills do I need to have a job? And I really appreciated that. Um, I think this is Victorian, I don't know, like history, <laughs> Victorian or Edwardian, like around there. Um, and I just, yeah, I really, really appreciated the, like the care and the stuff that went into this book. Um, I loved the, like the flashbacks that each of the characters had to their childhoods when they were inseparable. And it was just, it was just a lovely story. I really enjoyed this. Then we have two books uh, that were not on my Kindle, um, but they are not the first in a series. I thought I would mention them anyway. Um, I read, I read Heartstopper Volume Three. Um, so in this is the third book in the Heartstopper series, which is um, about these two characters getting together. So it's like a gay romance. Um, in this book, they are together. They're not out to the entire school, I think. Um, and we're seeing some different issues that they have to like support each other through. So there's mentions of uh, eating disorders and um, other kind of difficulties in life and I really liked that they were sort of learning to be there for each other. That was really good in this story. Uh, I think there's going to be more volumes and I think I'm going to buy them because it's so cute. <laughs> um, then I also read the Vox, Mar Vox Machina Origins volume 2. And I found that I really enjoy the format of turning a D and D campaign into a graphic novel. There's something so I don't know, something so nice about it to have the um, the visuals and to like I don't know. It takes a little bit of a shorter time to read <laughs> than to listen to or watch. And yeah, I. I think I will continue reading Vox Machina Origins and also, uh, what's it called, The Adventure Zone because, yeah, it just, for me, it just makes perfect sense for me <laughs> to read these stories in graphic novel form because it's not quite a novel kind of thing, um, but in audio it's also just a bit much sometimes. So. I'm really happy about them making graphic novels out of them. And also, bonus, you get lovely art, which is always lovely. Okay, those are the books I wanted to talk to you about um, that I've read in February, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye!